Uh, thank you for coming today, folks, and we appreciate your patience in what's been an interesting 24 hours for our club. Uh, as released earlier today, I'm very pleased to confirm that the Fremantle player's precautionary test for COVID-19 has come back negative. And with his approval, I can confirm the player is Sam Swakowski. We purposely did not release Sam's identity in an effort to afford him a reasonable level of privacy. We feel strongly that Sam is absolutely entitled to that. And with this in mind, request that his and his family's privacy be requested ongoing, be respected ongoing. The club made this decision yesterday to take a conservative approach with Sam and have him tested after he presented with flu-like symptoms and had been in contact with a friend who had visited China. We felt this was an important action to take to ensure that the safety of everyone involved with our football club, players, staff and the broader community. Happy to take any questions. How's Sam feeling? I imagine very relieved. Sam's relieved and feeling quite well in himself. Um, it, in reality, it's been proven to be a, a cold and and something that isn't overly dramatic and he's keen to get back to training as soon as he possibly can. So when will that be? Uh, it could be as early as tomorrow. Having just spoken to him, he's in good spirits and as I said, just recovering from what is a mild cold. Um, so there's a chance he might train tomorrow or later in the week if we take so, that conservative approach. So he's still in isolation right now? Yes, that's right. Yep. How worried was he initially because it's something pretty serious that's going around? It's certainly obviously serious um, from a, a community perspective. Um, we always thought it was it was more likely that he was going to be negative, but um, given the instance of, of him being in contact with an at-risk person and he presented flu-like symptoms, we wanted to take a conservative approach. Mm -hmm. are, there, um, are there any precautions you're taking at all, anything you're doing differently in terms of the player group? Uh, there's a whole host of things um, that we're doing differently to, to what was previously standard operating conditions um, in relation to how, how the, the players um, follow protocols to ensure we minimise the risk um, that is obviously present in the community at, at this time. So is that just in terms of self-reporting? Can you give us an idea of what? Yeah, everything is as, as um, detailed as ensuring that you know all good practices of hygiene are followed. Um, you know, if there is any instance whatsoever of them feeling unwell or having some flu-like symptoms that they report them straight away. Everything that you're eating uh, and, you know, obviously with the fact that we'll be travelling in a week's time, um, our AFLW girls travel this coming Friday for a game in Melbourne on Sunday. So with that increases some risk. So there's a, a, a raft of, of protocols that we're putting in place to minimise the risk. So do you deal directly with state or federal governments or do you go through the AFL? Uh, both. Yeah, we're in discussions with um, state government here in Western Australia, Department of Health and the AFL. Um, you know, obviously in the last few days on a daily basis, but as regularly as we need to be. So what's your understanding of the risk of Optus Stadium maybe being shut to crowds? Uh, at this point in time, that's not happening. Um, but clearly what we, what we know, and certainly coming out of Melbourne today, that there is uncertainty um, and that could change in, 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 uh, in time. But certainly from our perspective, in our dealings with, with Optus Stadium, um, that we're full steam ahead to round two and, and looking forward to an optimistic for a big crowd for our first home game against Hawthorne. Things like handshakes, high fives, what's the club? Yeah, we, we haven't um, specifically uh, banned high fives and the like uh, for the time being. Again, this is something that changes on a daily basis. We're working with our players for them to take a, a common sense, really, really practical approach to, to that type of interaction um, and just be really careful um, to, to to minimise any risk. Is there any potential uh, financial risk for the club with uh, potentially no cr uh, no crowds for some of the ga early games? It's too early to tell. Clearly, you know, if if that um, scenario eventuates, then there is a likely impact on the organisation. We'd be working really closely with the AFL to ascertain how we'd handle that. In reality, that's going to be an industry in issue. It's not going to just be be something that would be isolated to one or two clubs. It's going to have a significant in, in industry uh, impact. So we'd be working closely with the AFL on how we best handle that type of scenario. GWS and Richmond have closed their club doors to visitors and fans. Is that something that you guys have spoken about doing? Yeah, we've, so we've formed um, essentially a working group that meets on a very regular basis in relation to um, how we react to the issues that we're confronting at the moment. And we've certainly got protocols in place that certainly limit the amount of external uh, entrance into the organisation. You all look exceedingly healthy uh, and good looking, but we decided to have this press conference out here for that exact reason. Um, we want to ensure that we minimise the risk, so therefore um, what was normal operating procedures previously with suppliers or fans or visitors or members or tours and that type of thing have dramatically reduced, um, but we're trying to do it in a balanced way.
So given your facility is so public here, how complex is that for you compared to other clubs? It's, it's certainly not difficult in terms of entering our facility. Um, that's quite separate from, from the wonderful community facility that we have here. Um, clearly there's limitations in terms of um, having for supporters and, and fans come down and watch us play, but we think um, that's not a significant issue for when the players are training on the track. So you're happy with, still with fans coming down and open training sessions? Yeah, absolutely. Autographs afterwards? Yep. 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 And just if I got to the stage of a game being shut, um, in terms of your members who have already paid, is that a buy beware situation or could there be partial refunds? That's something that we're working through currently. As I mentioned before, um, I think we'd look at an industry approach from an AFL point of view, um, and that's something we'd be working with them on looking at that. Again, at this point in time, that's not something that's um, that's that's been mandated or has even been suggested is, is a certainty to happen. It's an unknown. It's a hypothetical. Clearly, it's something we have to consider. And, and with all of the club's operations that we're working around where there could be an impact, clearly the financial is a really significant one. So we'll continue to contemplate that scenario, work with the AFL on what that would look like if the instance occurred where games were potentially played without crowds. Would you be hoping that something so, so sensitive was leaked from within the club? Obviously only a few people knew the information. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, we were really disappointed that um, Sam's identity, identity was released, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, we think he was absolutely afforded the right to privacy as he went through something that was as confronting as this. Um, so disappointing that that occurred, um, but that's something we'll work through in, in the course of time. Just on the closed door issue, would you be hoping for assistance from the AFL financially for the clubs if it were to come to that? Um, too early to tell, because um, clearly it's, as I said earlier, not going to be something that's impacting one or two clubs. It's going to be an industry-wide issue, um, and we wouldn't know how long that for. One game, two games, anything more than that. So um, I think we'd need to really get an understanding of the quantum of that before we'd have a position on how we're going to deal with it. Do you have any update on Stephen Hill's uh, injury? We, we understand that something happened on the weekend, but the extent of that soft tissue injury? No further update other than the scan showed that there was uh, a, a slight concern with, with Healy's quad and we're working through uh, the absolute details of that as we speak. Oh, so there's no, uh, no timeline been early. Anything, not at this point. And as far as Jesse Hogan, have you been in contact with him recently? Uh, the club, we've been in contact with Jesse throughout and um, you know, looking forward to Jesse returning um, at the right time. Uh, can, can you provide any update with that whatsoever? No, not at this point in time. Our priority, as we've said the whole way along, is um, for Jesse's health and well-being. Um, we can't wait to have him back as soon as he's ready, but the priority is, is the health and well-being rather than you know, him back at a certain time frame to play a game of footy. Oh. Ryan spoke out this morning in, in the age about Jesse. Have you heard those comments? No, I haven't. Do you think it's appropriate for him to be commenting on, on that situation? Uh, Ross obviously was here for a significant period of time, was here when Jesse was recruited, so he's in the media now and don't begrudge him that at all, but it's not a concern for us. He's come out and said it was not his decision to hire Jesse, it's basically pushed it onto other people of the club. Mm. Do you agree with that? I wasn't here at the time, so hard for me to comment from that perspective. Um, and yeah, it's not something we spend a lot of time thinking about. Um, so. How's Hayden Young tracking? Uh, Hayden's going really well, yeah, so he's progressing like any young player coming into an AFL environment for the first time. Um, sometimes there's, there's some physical challenges, um, but he's coping really well. Uh, incredibly impressive young man, think he's going to be a, a great player for us over a significant period and um, you know, we're playing the long game with Hayden, but expect him to be playing. Um, if it's not a practice match this week, it'll be certainly in the next couple of weeks. How are you feeling about the start of the season in general with such a long injury list? Um, I'm feeling really positive given the fact that um, between our men's and women's team we're undefeated so it's hard to be too disappointed on that fact. I don't think you know, we can ask from a, from a member or fan or club perspective that we can ask for too much more than that but um, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we've got a, a, an injury list that's a bit longer than we'd like, um, seeing the style of footy that's been played, seeing the young players that are coming in playing roles and doing their bit. I think Fifey um, talked about it a bit this morning and the fact that we want to build an environment where players can come in, play a role, be incredibly enthusiastic and desperate and, and do what we need them to do. And I think we've seen that in evidence. So um, if that's something that we can maintain and continue through the early parts and latter parts of the season, whilst we get the likes of, of a Mundy and a, a Pierce and a Wilson back, then um, I think we'll be really well placed. And have you made a final call on Blake Akers, whether he needs surgery? Uh, no, not as yet. No, not as yet.